What's up guys, my name is Richard Su. Today I'm gonna to help you guys create your first liquidity pool position. So before we get started, I wanted to share you guys my current open liquidity pool position to show you that I know what I'm talking about, right? So if you can see here, my APR right now is about 59% because I prefer wider ranges and take on less risk and it's, I'm projected to make over $5,000 per month according to uh, the current volume, right? And if you look at this number, this is really important versus just holding the tokens I deposited, I'm still up about 6,000 something dollars. So I'm beating in permanent loss versus just holding, right? The number, Profit and loss number is negative because the market is down, the alt markets are down, and I expect this to turn positive once the market recovers. So the process is pretty simple, guys. The first step you wanna do is you wanna scan for the tokens you wanna to provide liquidity for. You then simulate the pools, how it's gonna perform, and then you deploy your capital. So the first app I use to look for new tokens or what tokens I want to provide liquidity for is coin market cap, right? You, you can see Bitcoin, Ethereum, a lot of top coins, Solana, Cardano, um, AVAX, SUI. A lot of these tokens have um, on-chain liquidity pools that you could deposit your tokens and make trading fees, right? You could also dive down different categories like memes, um, I provide liquidity for Pepe and ETH, for example, right, MOG and ETH. And there's different categories if you don't like memes. For example, you could look at real world assets or gaming. And then what you could do is, for example, um, I click on Ondo. You can do some big picture research, right? You can look at the token unlocks and um, what the token is all about. Right, and what you want to look at is where it's trading. For example, I clicked on this DEX tab and then I see that it's mainly trading on Uniswap V3 on Ethereum mainnet, right? On the ETH and Ondo pair. So the volume is high here. That's what I want to look for. So the next tool I use to scan for uh, potential liquidity position is Crystal. And you can start, for example, with Ethereum mainnet, and then the best APR pairs, the blue chip pools. A lot of times the best APR ones, I just ignore because a lot of it is either like small, really small cap tokens or meme coins that, that are super high risk. And then you can look at the blue chip pools, for example, BNB and ETH, last 24 hours is doing well, LINK USDC, BTC USDC, and the token you pick, guys, it depends on your strategy, what you're bullish on, and what you already hold. So if I click on ETH and USDC here, I can see which platforms and which fee tiers that people are providing liquidity for, right? And I can see the 24 hour APR here. So on Ethereum mainnet, ETH and USDC hasn't been doing that great compared to some other chains. Let's look at base chain as a comparison. So ETH and USDC, for example, on PancakeSwap and on Uniswap is doing higher APR, right? And the APR on PancakeSwap might be higher because there might be some uh, platform rewards that you can get. And the next tool you guys could use to look for tokens and pools to provide liquidity for is Dex Screener. You want to make sure this is on last 24 hours. You click on top, top volume, and then you can see a lot of uh, tokens. For example, ETH USDC, we just looked at on Ethereum mainnet Uniswap, stuff like Sol USDC or BNB USDT on these different chains or platforms. Today, we're going to focus on ETH and USDC just because crypto and stablecoin pools are usually lower risk for beginners. This is great guys, because you can see the different platforms, different chain you're looking for. Let's say you want to LP for ETH and USDC. Base might be good, Aerodrome. 
or ETH mainnet, or we if we scroll down, right, Arbitrum on Camelot. And the, the next step, you want to look at the chart and see if everything checks out, right? This is the Ethereum weekly chart. As you can see, the price have retraced quite a bit, but it's there's some support at the 100 period weekly moving average. And I do expect that the price would recover and potentially move much higher into the board. So here you could already mark your levels, what range you want to set, right? For example, I could set $2,000 on the downside and then maybe 4,500 on the upside. This is wider than most people do it, but this is just my strategy. Your strategy could be different. Um, and I'll explain why I do this. Then the next thing we want to do is go to revert finance. You click on top positions, right? Make sure it's on all networks. You click filter, you put on the assets you want to LP for ETH, USDC or USDT, right? And you want to make sure you're filtering the age from six, at least 60 days to maybe 180 days or higher just to filter out the newer pools that might have good APR, but doesn't have a good track record yet, right? So here you guys could see the different chain and different platform that people are providing liquidity for and their profit and loss, their APR. All these information are, are very important in providing you the information that you need to select which pool you want to go for. So if we're looking at the first one here, the APR might be good, but it might not um, have a good track record either, right? Even though the position age is 150 days, um, you can see they deposit and withdrew a lot. So we don't know the actual profit and loss, right? And it's, it's not in range a lot of times. So this these are what you want to ignore and maybe look for a position like this, right? The US dollar value is low, but the fee APR is pretty accurate. So if you see here, right, they only deposit a couple of times, there's no withdrawal. So the APR should be fairly accurate. As you can see, they set a range of $2,500 on the downside and then $4,000 on the upside. And you can see versus holding the fee APR is about 57%. So now that you know the chain and the platform you want to provide liquidity for, we're going to hop over to metrics finance next. So in this example, we're using Uniswap and base, right? I put ETH, ETH, and then USDC. I'm going to go for the 0.05 fee tier. I click simulate and this will pop out. So ETH is about 2650 right now. And this graph shows you the liquidity distribution. So if it's like a really sharp like this, it means liquidity is concentrated in this area. For this example, we're depositing about roughly one ETH, right? Deposit amount 2650. And I'm setting the lower range at 2000 and then the upper range at 4,500, just as an example. And if you look here, this is the amount of USDC you need to swap into. And this is the amount of ETH you're willing to hold. And I can set my calculation range up to 90 days, or if you want more recent data, you could drag this down. And the key thing here, guys, is to look at the, the worst case scenario and the best case scenario so you could prepare for it. So if we click simulate position performance, we can see um, if ETH is at 2650 right now, um, then the price should be the same as if you're just holding, right? The strategy A and B providing liquidity is the same. But let's say ETH drops to $2,000, right? Your lower range, what would happen? So this is what would happen, right? You're, your ending ETH balance is one point around 1.05. Um, you gain 0.05 ETH, but if you held the US dollar value would be more. And it takes about 60 days to outperform the strategy A. 
and you 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 need to pay for the pro version to edit this number but it's still a great tool if you're using a free version so if we look at the other case scenario where let's say ETH moves to 4500 right towards the top of the range that pulls us out of range my one ETH would turn into 3147 USDC roughly so I just sold my ETH at a rough average of 3150 and it would take me well over 300 days to cover um, the impermanent loss but this number is actually not that accurate it might be like down to half the reason why is because the liquidity is quite concentrated here the actual APR is maybe around 50 percent because what happens guys if is if ETH moves down for example to $2,500 right we can see the APR jumped up quite high because the the your there's less concentration here right and people might rebalance and then try to catch it but that's why I like uh, wider range pulls guys is because like a lot of people get knocked out of range when ETH moves around and then I get like a higher average APR. So the next tool you could use is this impermanent loss calculator, right? I want to know exactly how my position is doing if the price diverges from my entry price. So just follow this step by step guys. V deposit is the value you deposited. In that example, we're using 2650 because we're depositing about roughly one ETH into the pool right at 2650 then we scroll down to prices the price upper is the upper range you're setting in this example you're setting 4500 lower range 2000 right the price now is like let's say ETH pumps to four thousand dollars is what we're simulating right and the price at the time of deposit is 2650 because you entered the position at 2650 and if you look at the impermanent loss you're suffering about you know 11 percent in impermanent loss if ETH rises up um, to this amount and as long as your fees are greater than let's say 11 percent over the long run right and the ETH, ETH just stays at four thousand dollars for example then you're beating impermanent loss so the next thing we want to look at is the pos this position tab up top. The YMAX shows you the USDC value that that you're going to end up with if it if ETH pumps out of range on the upside, right? So you you ended up with around 3663. That's the average selling price of your ETH. And then if ETH drops in price, your USDC that you swapped earlier gets converted to ETH to about 1.055. It's roughly the same as what metrics was simulating, but this just shows you, um, it gives you more flexibility when you're simulating, right? Let's say uh, ETH pumps to $6,000, for example, you're incurring 34% impairment loss, and but you still end up with higher US dollar value than when you started. And the, the wider your range, the less fees you get, but the less impermanent loss you face, right? Let's say the upper range is set to 6,500, then the impermanent loss cuts down to about 26, 27%, right? And the goal is to have more fees than the impermanent loss over the time you're providing liquidity for. So the last step in simulation is hopping back in revert. We're setting the network to base Uniswap for this example. ETH USDC, we're picking the 0.05% pool like we did earlier. And if you guys can see, right, the fees over the total value lock is higher than other pools as well. So the minimum price is 2000, what we set, and then 4500 for the max, right? I put in one ETH, just as an example, it shows you, you know, the amount you swap 
and I run back tester. And here you can see your, your fee, average fee over the previous 30 days, right? Since our range was pretty wide, we were in range 100% of the time. You can compare the performance against holding. The APR sometimes is not accurate, guys. So for example, we pulled in $110 in fees just by putting in one ETH in the last 30 days, right? So if you go 110 times 12, right? You analyze the fee divided by 2650 is what we put in, in terms of USD, right? We're looking at roughly almost 50% APR rather than the 15%. And if you guys go back to metrics, we can see that number is higher than 30%. So if we hop back to the calculator and we input that ETH pumps to $5,000, we can see our employment loss is around 24%. And since our APR is around 50%, as long as I stay in range for more than six months, then it's highly likely that I'm gonna beat the impermanent loss. So to deploy your positions, simply swap your ETH or USDC to ETH, depending on what you hold, based on the apps that we use. If we go back to metrics finance, Right. If the current price is twenty six fifty, I'm putting in twenty six fifty, which is about one ETH. I need to swap about nine hundred fifty USDC. Right. I'll just go ahead, make sure ETH is selected on base, USDC on base. Right. I put in nine fifty. Then I'm gonna sign and swap this amount. Then once I have that, I'm gonna click pull new select the pairs we go to base right ETH base and then usdc base and make sure you're selecting either v3 or v4 v4 is new guys i haven't tested the fees but I, i'm still using v3 right you can use v3 too v3 let's do 0 0.05 percent like what we had Right, we're going to do custom price range 2000 to 4500. Right, and if we zoom out, it covers a lot of 69% uh, on the upside and then 24 25% on the downside. Right, we're going to click continue, and then if I input the amount of what I put in before 950 it takes about 0.6 ETH which is roughly um, a little bit less than metrics finance had because ETH's price moved a bit right and then once you have that you just uh, create the position then you're all set and then you can track your position after that so some final thoughts guys you want to start with wider ranges just because you could make mistakes and the mistakes are much less costly if you start with wider ranges. Don't deploy all your funds at once when you're still learning because if you make mistakes again, you're going to be losing a lot of money. Understand the risk reward and what's the upside, what's your downside. Look at my other videos to help you mitigate some of those risks. And you really want to think long term, right? Like six months, 12 months from now, what the price is going to do, what's my plan, what's my strategy into this bull run. Then the last step is just to monitor and adjust if needed, rebalance when things moves against you, and then you constantly improve your process. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you out, hit that like button and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.